Hey, it's Anaya from Glam Graphics. Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you how to make this banner for your website. First, I'm starting off on Canva and I'm going to make a custom size design and do it 1350 by 500 PX. Now I'm going to start designing and of course I'm starting with the background. I wanted to keep a simple color scheme so I just went with this black silk background that I thought would be cute. Now that I have my background, I'm gonna go to Pinterest and start picking out some photos for me to use so I can kinda start putting everything together. If you're making a banner for your business, obviously you probably already have photos, so you might just be able to skip this step completely. But I still wanted to show y'all where I get my photos from. But I got all the main photos I needed, so I'm gonna go back over to Canva and start putting stuff together. For all the other elements, I use Google and I'm just clicking through and showing y'all what I looked up and what pictures I use. PNG file is a file that is ideal for digital art. It's usually larger in size and the background can be transparent. So it's overall easier to use. You can see the picture of the diamonds that I use. The background itself on the viewing screen is white. But when you click on the image, this checkered background pops up and that actually lets you know that the background is transparent. So I'm back in Canva and I'm about to start putting things on this blank background. I'm going to start with the button and the text and go from there. For the button, I'm using a square with the rounded edges and I'm gonna reshape it and color it to my liking to make it look more like a button. Once I get the right sizing, I'm gonna move it into place. I'm gonna use my pre-made banners underneath to double check and make sure I'm kinda good on the sizing. And then I'm going to place it. Now that the button is placed, I'm going to add the text to it. Now that I finished the button, I'm gonna select the text from it, duplicate it, and finish up the rest of the text. Now that I have that added, I'm gonna duplicate again so I can add the selfies. I'm changing the font and gonna add an effect to make it stand out. I changed the sizing of selfies to 201 and I'm adding the neon effect at 50. Now I'm just moving stuff around and playing around with the placements and the sizing. I actually take selfies back down to 177. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to, you're not gonna see the full look until you get all your different elements on there and placed and then you can play around with 
different variations and different placements and sizing and stuff like that. I'm also doing all of this on my iPad and Canva does allow you to use and edit on both desktop, mobile, and other devices. But at the same time on my iPad, I'm not getting as precise movements as I would on my laptop. Canva has done a lot with updating the app and making sure it's beginner friendly and really easy to use. But unfortunately on my iPad, I feel like there is still some limitations, but it's always, it's easy to work around. And if I have any big problems, I can always go and touch it up and check on my laptop. Now it's time for me to start adding the other elements. I'm going to start with adding the money. I'm going to add it to the background and I'm actually splitting it into two different images so it doesn't look the same on both sides. Now that I finished the money, I'm moving on to adding the lashes. This part was pretty simple. I didn't have to resize or do anything like that. I just played around with the placement and figured out the best way for me to show the lashes while still hiding the text on the box. I'm going to duplicate, rotate, and then flip the lashes horizontally so the boxes match up as they should. Now that everything is coming together, you can kind of see where the placement is off and what you need to change and move around. Now I'm going to add the diamond background behind the phone. I'm going to go to frames and scroll down until I get to like the paint strokes and pick the one in the middle. Make sure as you follow along, you're paying attention to your layering. I actually am not sure where I got the original diamond background I used from, but I tried to find one that was as close as possible, but it will look a little different. But all you gotta do is grab the background and drag and drop, and it will fill that in. Now I'm going to add the Instagram like icon.
Now it's time for me to show you how to do the iPhone. I usually use Photoshop to do stuff like this and I already had this pre-made, but I'll show you how to do it on your phone, on your tablet for free. You're gonna go to Pixar and open up a blank canvas and then go to stickers and search up phone screen. Now this is how I do it because I feel like I get the best results doing it this way. So I'm just gonna show y'all what I do. So I'm taking the phone screen and I'm gonna add a shadow to it and position it how I want. And once I do that, I'm saving it to my camera roll. Now I'm back in Canva and I'm about to show you how to add the iPhone. I'm adding the original iPhone image without the glow. And then I'm adding the one that I made with the glow. The one with the glow is the one that I'm placing first. I'm going to resize it and tilt it so it looks like the iPhone below. You have to really pay attention on this part because you don't want to overlap anywhere to where you can see that it's more than one iPhone because then it won't look clean. Now I'm grabbing my image to put on top of the iPhone with the glow. And I'm gonna resize it for it to fit perfectly so it doesn't overlap any of the sides and can't be seen. This is way easier to do with your keyboard, of course, but I'm on the iPad, so I'm doing the best that I can, um, but it's taking me a little time but just be patient. It's better for it to take a while and look good than not look good. Now that I've got it placed, I'm adding the regular iPhone on top to cover up any of the imperfections. Now that I have the placement right, I just have to move the money on top of the phone so you can see it. And unfortunately, it's behind the layers I just added. So I have to push all the layers back to get to the money to bring it to the front. But it's okay, I just gotta make sure they're in the right order at the end. And now we're officially done. 
I've showed you how to create a banner for your business. Now I'm going to show you how to add that banner to your Shopify website. With the sizing that we did, your banner should fit on most, if not all, of the Shopify themes as long as you have the correct settings. If you run into any problems, you can always go back on Canva and resize it. So I'm editing my site and I'm going to go to Image with Overlay and select my banner. I'm going to add it. And here are my settings. The image alignment is middle, the layout is full width, and the section height is adapt to image. Unfortunately for the link and button part of the image, if I were to type something where it says button label, it would cause an overlay like this over top of my banner, and it just would mess up the whole look. I'm going to try to figure out another way for me to actually link the image. And once I figure it out, I'll either put it in the comments or make another video so I can let y'all know. Check out my Etsy shop where I sell pre-made templates that are easy to use. These banners are available there as a set. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any video ideas, put them in the comments below.